Greetings and welcome back to another episode of Afro Plus One modding tutorials and in today's episode I'm gonna show you how to use the MC Entity Tech Damage callback. What this callback allows us to do is to essentially detect whenever any entity in the room takes damage and then we can react accordingly. So what we can do is maybe ignore the damage entirely, we can reduce it by maybe a half or maybe we can trigger some other effects like maybe the bean whenever the enemy hits us, we fart around us or maybe we shoot theirs or whatever. In this case I have three examples to show you maybe how to use this particular callback and I hope that it will help you on your adventures as you code and maybe make your own mods. So with that said, let's get started. The first callback here is a very general one. It's just a regular MC Entity Take Damage callback and I just say whenever any entity in the room takes damage, call Take Damage function. And in this case, Take Damage function, what it does is just takes all the parameters that you get naturally via this callback and just puts it in debug text. And then that debug text is shown on the screen. So if maybe you're not really sure what the values of these variables are whenever something happens or whenever maybe some entities take damage, you would really want this setup in your code to maybe debug or maybe to test or maybe just to see what the particular values are. But in this case, what these parameters mean is that the first one, entity, correlates to which entity took damage. And this is an entity from the entity class and has all of the appropriate functions and variables and whatever else you would want. And in this case, what I do is just I output the type. And the type tells us we, what is the type of the entity which took damage. So of course, in the case of maybe the player, that would be entity type dot entity player, which I believe is the value of two. But of course, in the case of any other enemy, the type would also be appropriate to which enemy actually got hit. The second one is damage amount, and damage amount is how much damage did that entity take. You have to be careful here, because if a player took damage, that damage amount will be 1, 2, 3, or whatever number, and essentially that correlates, 1 correlates to half heart of damage, and 2 correlates to 1 full heart of damage, and of course any more than that correlates to the appropriate half hearts of damage. But if an enemy takes that damage, damage amount will then be correlated to how much damage they actually took. So if an enemy has 100 HP and you shoot them for 20 HP, that means that that damage amount will be 20. So maybe that's something that you need to be wary of and just kind of keep in mind when you're actually coding your own mods. The next one is damage flag. And damage flag tells us what type of damage it was in some sense. If there's nothing going on, if it's a very just a regular tier of damage, that damage flag will be zero. But there are some other things or maybe some other effects like explosive damage which are, have on their own damage flag. So if I just show you the documentation here and I just maybe scroll down a bit, I lost it, there it is, the damage flag. And the damage flag correlates to the type of damage that you are taking. So you can see that there's a bunch of different damage types like damage fire, damage explosion, damage red hearts. And if you just click on this particular enumeration, you can see that there's a description. So if I just take a look at something like damage fake, that's fake damage that doesn't really deal damage to the player, but just deals the fake effects. So this is important in some cases, especially if you use the take damage function like I do next. But essentially this allows you to maybe have a little bit more control of what type of damage you're doing. So if you want to decode something like Pyromaniac, for example, you would check if the damage flag is an explosive damage flag and then you would ignore that damage because that correlates to the explosive damages. I hope that makes sense, but essentially the damage flag does tell you along tops of side that is what kind of damage you're taking. One thing maybe to keep in mind is that the damage flag is a binary, again, a binary number in some sense, which means that you can have multiple flags enabled so you can have a fire damage and an explosive damage. They're not maybe exclusive to one another. The fourth one is the source and the source tells us which entity dealt damage to our entity. So source is the damage or maybe who dealt the damage and entity who is who took the damage. And in this case, I just say source.type. And one thing maybe to keep in mind here is that the source is an entity of reference and not an entity itself, which means that you really can't access all of the properties of entities or maybe there is a way I just haven't found one. But essentially, this does mean that we're kind of limited in what we can do with this particular um, with this particular variable, I guess, in some sense. But nevertheless, what you can access is its type. So that means you can ignore maybe if the damage is coming from one particular entity, or maybe you can check if that particular entity is the player, or maybe you can check if the damage that you took was a, from a fireplace or something like that, you know. And essentially this does tell you who dealt the damage to you. And in the case, if the bomb explodes on you, then that entity reference or the source of the damage would be the bomb, for example. And the last one is damage countdown frames. And damage countdown frames tells us how many invisibility 
the frames you have. So in the case, if this number was like 30, which is default for Isaac, I believe, that means that we are invincible for 30 more frames, or essentially that in that period, nothing can deal damage to us. This seems a bit useless to me, like it doesn't really have a place in there, I'm not really sure what you would use this for, but nevertheless, it is there, maybe if you have any ideas, maybe you would use this in your proje project somehow, it's there for you to use and you can kind of take advantage of it. The next function, maybe the ne next callback here, is the reduce bomb damage, and this is maybe a bit more specialized use of this particular callback. And you can see that there is a third parameter, and in this case I say entity type dot entity player. What this tells the game, or maybe Lua, is that we don't want to be calling this particular function reduce bomb damage whenever any, any entity takes damage, we want to only call it when player takes damage. And in this case, when player takes damage, this function is called, we get the same parameters as before, and then I have a long if statement. The first if, or maybe the first block of if, or maybe the first logic statement I have is if the source is not nil. And this is essentially just maybe a precautionary check, because in the next line, or maybe in the next statement, I check if the source.type is a bomb drop. And of course, if source was nil, that means it wouldn't have the property of type, which, which would mean that this is an error. But if I have this check first, that means if this particular one is false, or in that sense, if source is nil, it's not even gonna check anything beyond that and no error is gonna be returned. So that's, like I said, a bit precautionary, maybe it's not even needed, but nevertheless, I did put it in just to be a bit safe. So then I check if the type of the source of damage, like I said before, if the damage that we take is from a bomb, so from the dump we drop, then that entity type will be entity bomb drop. And in this case, we just get the type. And if it is a bomb drop, then we do something with it later on. And then I just check if the damage flag or maybe the damage that we took was from an explosion, as it will usually be if the damage source is a bomb. But nevertheless, I do check again, maybe as a more of a precautionary me measure. And if it is, then we actually go into our if statement. One thing that you have to realize is that if you just want to ignore damage that the player takes, you just have to return false. And whenever you return false, that means that that damage won't be taken. What this callback does essentially is it, it works again as an intermediary between you actually taking damage and before that damage is applied. So that means if an enemy hits us, this callback is called and then it is resolved and then we take damage in the game. So if you return false, but in this particular function, that means that we won't be taking any damage at all. So if I said something like this, for example, uh, this means that whenever we take damage, this function will be called and we will always return false, that means that our player will essentially be invincible. But in this case, that's not really what we're going for. But what I do here is I do return false whenever a bomb hits us and we're essentially saying, when that bomb drops and damages us for one full heart, because that's how much damage bombs do, we just return false and we don't take any damage from it. But like I said before, this is meant to reduce the damage we take from the bombs and not to ignore it completely. So for that reason, I have this line here where I say player take damage. I say one because I want only to take one half heart of damage. And then of course the flag is the explosion. Then the source is what is dealing damage to us. And then it's for how long we will be invincible. So we have some control over the invincibility frames here. But nevertheless, what we're doing is essentially ignoring the damage we are, we are dealt by the bomb. And we are inflicting less damage to ourselves via this function. So that's maybe a bit of a confusing way of going about things, but it seems to work pretty well and maybe it's a bit cheated, but nevertheless I do feel like it's a pretty elegant solution and it worked mo well in most cases. I'm sure there's a bug, but this is just one way of implementing it. Maybe a bit of a more safer way of doing the same thing or maybe, maybe doing a very similar thing is going in the entity hopper or maybe the, re the, the reduce hopper damage function. And in this case, this is a very similar callback. It's set up very similarly. And in this case, I just call the function reduce hopper damage whenever a hopper entity, an enemy, gets hit. And in this case, again, I have the same parameters. Everything is the same. But one thing I take maybe advantage of is the get data function. And what get data allows you to do is to access the properties of that particular entity. And you can add things on top of that. So if you go in our if statement here, because I think this is just a bit more important, is first again I check if the source is nil, and if it isn't, I check if the damage dealt to the hopper is a tier. So that means that whenever we shoot an enemy with a tier, we will be calling or performing some kind of damage calculation here. Then we check the damage flag, and in this case I check if it's zero. And if it's zero, that just means that no other flags are on, which just means base damage with our tears. If you had something like maybe flaming damage, this would maybe be flaming, or maybe if you had ipecac, this damage flag would correspond to damage explosion, but in this case when we spawn we have no particular status effects, no flag effects, so our damage flag will correlate to zero. And then, as I said before, when I access my data from my entity, 
I set a new property to it and it's called took damage. And this might seem a bit confusing, but if you just imagine that this wouldn't be here and I just said entity take damage, take whatever amount of damage, and then if I didn't return false, that means that even when I deal damage to the enemy, that this function would deal damage to it again. And when this damage, when this function deals damage to it, this particular function, this MC entity take damage callback will be called again and this entity take damage will deal damage to it again. Essentially, you will instantly kill the enemy if you just kind of just set this up and have no other precautions. So in this case, what I do to maybe keep that away from happening is I have a particular property called took damage. And whenever entity does take damage, I just set this property to true, just to indicate that this entity did take damage from our sources and not from natural sources, I guess. And in this case, you can see that I only do this if the da data talk damage is nil and nil, it will be nil essentially when there's a new entity or whenever the entity already hasn't existed in the game or when that data took damage is false and we just set it to false here. And essentially what this means that if we haven't dealt damage to the entity or maybe if we have dealt it but already calculated it, then only then we'll be actually letting this particular block of code execute. So when we do execute the code, we, we say entity take damage and we just reduce the damage amount by a half and just kind of ceilings. So we round that up. And when we round that up, then we just say that I took damage is true. So like I said before, because of this function, this callback, or maybe this reduce hopper damage function is called again. And then when we enter it, now the data, data took damage is true. And because it's true, then we only deal damage to it and then we set it back to false. And essentially what this means is that it, whenever we deal damage to the entity, instead of it kind of looping infinitely and just insta-killing it, we'll be only dealing that damage once. And when we set it back to false, uh, we will kind of keep repeating that. So I'm not really sure, when you actually go through the code and maybe think about it, it doesn't seem to work. It, it seems like it wouldn't work, but I'll show you in the actual game that this does have merit and that the actual damage it will be dealing to the entity will be reduced. So with that said, let's hop into the game and I'll show you how this actually works. Welcome to the game. So the first thing I really want to show off is the take damage function. And this is just a function when we deal damage to any entity, it will just display some text on the screen. So I'll just spawn a putter here. I'll just kill him so he doesn't annoy us. But you can see that when, when we actually deal damage to that particular entity, we have some text on the screen. The first number correlates to the type of the, the entity that we damaged. In this case, the type of the putter is 14 and that's what is displayed on the screen. The next one is the damage amount that we did to that particular entity. And in this case, because our damage is 3.5, that's how much damage we actually dealt to him. The third one is the damage flags. And in this case, because we have no other flags or maybe we just dealt damage with a regular tiers, the damage flag is zero. Then the fourth parameter is who dealt the damage to that particular entity. In this case, two correlates to entity type dot entity player, which means that the player dealt damage to the putter. And then the last one is damage count of frames, which I said inc are there for posterity, I guess, but I'm not really sure what they do in some sense. I, as I said before, these are supposed to be invisibility frames, but I don't actually think that enemies have invisibility frames. Nevertheless, it's there for posterity and it's just what it is. The next one is reduce damage from bombs. So if you see, if I just bomb myself, you can see that I do only take half a heart of damage. So I don't take a full heart of damage anymore. And I do change the text on the screen, but essentially this just, mean, this, this just means that we are taking less damage from our own bombs, but any other bomb sources will still be taking the full amount of damage. The last one is we just have to spawn a hopper and luckily if it's a hopper, it is, and I shoot it, you can see that we actually do deal reduce damage to it. And for some reason, when I actually go through the calculation, I mean, not for some reason, but because I round the number and because of how rounding works, when we actually divide the number, then that particular damage goes down to one. But essentially we're dealing reduce damage to uh, to, to, to the hoppers and you can see, see that there are a few things going on here and the last one you can see the damage flag here is 32,000 and that's just because spider mod walked over it but if I just want another hopper maybe I didn't really show it well because he did walk over it you can see that we are dealing reduced damage to this particular entity and th th that's really all there is to it. And of course you can implement your own maybe armor shields with that, something like Hush would have. And may maybe Hush's shield is a bit more advanced of how you would implement it, but you can definitely implement some form of scaling shields like other enemies have. I'm not really sure why you would do that because not a lot of people really like that mechanic, but nevertheless, you can do that. And this is maybe a, a one way of going about it. 
So that brings us at the end of this video, and I know it might be a bit of an odd topic or f why I would even cover this particular callback, but a lot of questions I'll be getting, especially in Discord, have been related to this particular callback, or I would rather say that a lot of the problems that people have can be very easily resolved by just using this callback. In this case, I maybe showed you a few of the advanced solutions or maybe some of the few advanced examples of what this particular callback will do, but in a lot of cases, what you really just want to do is maybe reduce the damage, or maybe what you just want to do is just ignore the damage entirely or maybe even better you just want to trigger something when a particular entity takes damage and this callback does allow you to do that very elegantly and it also it's also very well optimized for how it works. It also allows you to detect collisions and to some degree, of course, you can only detect collisions whenever maybe you take damage or maybe whenever you walk into something, but nevertheless, it has a lot of uses and I do think that it's maybe not as well represented because I just never really explicitly covered it in any of my videos. Of course, this is just some of the many things you can do with it and if you have any of your own ideas or maybe if you really want to know if something is possible, please ask me, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to explain it to you, and I hope that, that we can resolve and maybe come to a conclusion together. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys, and I hope to see you next time.